Hello everyone and welcome to another video. How is everyone doing and how is your climb going? Well, for me it was a nice experience since we are back in our usual natural emerald elo. The sad part is that I got banned for 5 games. I think it's a baby ban where Riot stops you from playing League of Legends to teach you that telling bad players they are bad is a bad thing. After this game I think the ban happened after this game where we had a supremely feeding bot lane, but that is something behind us and now we are trying to recover mentally from that and enjoy our break in normal games. But this game is still ranked. And yes, you are not deceiving yourself. In this game we are not the bear. We are playing against Volibear. This game is in plat 1, and to my surprise this player tried to use the same technique I use usually against yours truly. Well this game is a good example of the effectiveness of my early game strategies where we invade the enemy jungle and force a fight around his buff. The only issue with this player is that he's a little bit aggressive. I think he's 10% extra aggressive. But regardless of his excessive aggression, his team moved accordingly. My team got tilted from that play, and we lost a lot in the early game simply from his invade. But all good. It made me a little bit happy to see that others are going for my ply style. Luckily for me, I decided to play Yorick in the jungle, and you will see why I picked this champion. I picked Yorick against Volibear for three main reasons. First, Yorick is a very cool champion, and the second thing is that Volibear is a heavy auto-attack champion. Hence, if you manage to cage the bear, he will have a very difficult time getting out of his wall, and you will delay Volibear's gameplay and ruin his engage. Thirdly, it doesn't matter if you lose the early game as Yorick. Now regarding our interaction against Volibear. For example, if he engages and I put the wall around someone, the wall on your carry decent stop him from moving away. Volibear will stay in. He will use four auto attacks to get out, and if he uses his flash, then the wall will stay behind him. His team will have a hard time reaching out to him, being overextended into our backline, and he will be an easy kill. This is why I always find it hard to play against Yorick. As the game progresses, it is almost impossible to win against a fed Yorick in the late game if he builds properly against you. Most of the time, you will be killed by his maiden since you are forced to fight him if he decide to split push. Yorick will try to waste your resources and force you into fighting his ghouls. So it is a rare and weird matchup. I don't encounter Yorick as much in the jungle, but I think whatever I do in the mid game, I start to make mistakes around his wall. So I decided to do the same for this Volibear. Our team got a very peculiar composition. We got a Cassidin in the top side, Zoe in the mid lane against Kennen, and Caitlyn with support set. Now in this game we had three tilted champions, Cassidin, Zoe, and Set. At a certain point in the game, I think Cassidin started complaining about the game, saying that we should forfeit because this game is over, and we are wasting our time. But the ADC, I think this is a rare sight. One in a million chance where the ADC is the one that says, Guys, we can win. The moment he said that, I almost had a tear in my eye. This man has the spirit of a warrior. Even if we lose, just the fact that our ADC is confident enough that he can carry is a good memory to remember from this match. Now I can go on and on and on about the benefits of why you should play Yorick. But this champion has a lot of downsides. First is that this champion is useless without ghouls. Not the maiden, but ghouls. If you don't have ghouls, you are as useless as your next cannon minion. Second, your items are very expensive. You can go for a low-budget Yorick build, but you will fall off as the game progresses. As long as the game progresses, you will fall off. So building properly with Yorick is crucial, and it is something that requires skill and a lot of experience. And the last part of why this champion is bad is the game and team mentality. Yorick in the jungle is a very off-meta pick. Usually the average is around 1,000 games each patch. Hence, people are not familiar with Yorick. They don't know how the interaction goes, how your ganks work, how you farm, or when you are reliable. If you lose the early fight and sometimes tell your team to give up Drakes and only fight for Baron, it might not go very well with your team. Hence, to be good with Yorick, you need to lose a lot of games with this champion so that you can build some confidence and game knowledge on why and how you play Yorick. And hopefully your team is okay with this pick and you can have some good games with Yorick. Now I decided to go for a very known known build with Yorick, and that is Sunderer Sky, Black Cleaver and Hullbreaker. This is your go-to build when you are starting to play this champion in the jungle. You get everything you need with this build. You don't require defensive stats because you shouldn't be frontline as a Yorick. It gives you a lot of HP, a lot of damage, and some mobility with heavy cooldown reduction. The good thing about this build is if you get left alone in one lane, 
you possibly can end the game around 20, 25 minutes. So, I play Yorick usually when Volibear is banned or when someone picks Volibear. And on average, all my games, even if they are bad at the start, end up winning with this champion. Sometimes the game gets forfeited because they don't believe in the pick or they think they are wasting their time. But the pick is very strong against any composition. And it is true what Tyler1 said about this champion. Yorick is a pick that is very interactive. It means that you don't play against someone. You play against towers, you play against minions, and you play with yourself. Hence, if you endure enough as Yorick, you should win the game. But in this game, I wanted to go for a mixed approach where we play around our team instead of going for teleport with smite, and bait our team into facing enemies and then teleporting to end the game. I keep flash with Nimbus Cloak so that we have some leeway when we fight against the enemy team. And if we get caught, simply put a wall and flash over the wall. Since the wall doesn't affect our hitbox, we can flash through it. If the enemy tries to flash to follow you, odds are high that they would fail the flash and couldn't catch up with you. The Nimbus Cloak boost will help you get out of sticky situations. Now regarding the gameplay in question, you should always, as Yorick, get as many grubs as you can and make sure to secure the Herald buff. And why is that? With Herald buff, even if you don't get the grubs, you are sure to take at least two towers and expose one inhibitor. And if you have your ghouls and maiden, you are guaranteed to make a massive play that will force the enemy team into a defensive position. For example, in this situation, the moment that we killed Akshan, it was very clear that that lane is ours. We will at least reach the inhibitor. The enemy team might realize that a little bit too late, and specifically if you do that around an objective, for example, if the Drake is up, the enemy team might contest. Fighting against our team 3v4 or 3v5, if our team is a little bit smart, they will fight them at extreme range. In other words, they are not contesting the Drake, but they are stopping the enemy team from recalling or getting back to us, giving us room to get as much as possible. Sometimes your team will not realize that they don't know where you are. The fact that you are not around Drake will confuse them 100%. And even if you manage to get the inhibitor, someone will flame you. This is my usual experience whenever I go for Drake versus inhibitor. But sometimes it works. The team plays according to your playstyle. Sometimes the team is not used to being the side character, and you should live with it. Try not to justify your gameplay if you are playing Yorick in the jungle because this is how you should play Yorick. Grouping, hand-holding, and trying to peel for your carry are not how this champion is played. Yorick is so unique that he almost doesn't have any positive interaction with anyone in the game. Hence, you play as if you are a family guy. You provide for your four kids and your wife, give them the gold and experience they need, and you make sure to buy some cool items to make your maiden happy. That is why, in this particular situation, I released the maiden earlier to create a huge wave that will push toward the tower, and to set up for a second push where my team will try to fight and push for a tower while I finish this push later on. Since my presence is not that beneficial for my team, I will find the moment to sneak out and complete my earlier task, which is to take out all towers and expose the nexus, and possibly end the game. Now there is another issue with Yorick, and that is, this champion is very skill dependent. In other words, if you don't land your E, you are useless, and Yorick can't land E easily. Hence, you put all your faith in delivering your damage once you land your E. Thankfully, Riot tried to fix that issue with Yorick and improve the movement speed, range, and hitbox of his E. But there is still a lot of room to improve with this champion. Now you might have noticed that we didn't interact a lot with Volibear in this game, except in the early game. Every time we meet, if he thinks about engaging on us, he's already losing that encounter. So if I were playing Volibear against a Yorick player, I would try to forsake the objectives, force towers, and get to where Yorick wants to be before him. In other words, if he wants to take our inhibitor, we should take an inhibitor too. If they are doing Drake, we are forcing mid lane or Baron buff, and in the process we will try to catch someone and create a situation where we are always even. And with this play, sadly, our time together has reached to an end. As always, make sure to leave a comment, drop a like, and subscribe if you are new to this channel. Hopefully in our next video, we will be rocking Volibear trying to reach a higher tier this season. With this, until the next one, thank you for watching and take care. Peace.